It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. What a job. With £200 each. You with me? A classic car. Buckle up. And a gold to scar Britain for antiques. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> There'll be worthy winners. Yes. And valiant losers. So, will it be the high road to glory <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Have a good trip. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Charlie, yes. where do you think this wee lean's taking us to? I think he's taking us to maybe a manure heap because <laughs> that's what it needs to. Oh, just Have you passed wind? Take me back to the city. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Pinch your noses. Anita Manning and Charles Hansen are fragrant finders of antiques gold are back on the road, hoping for the sweet smell of success. I'm not complacent, Charlie, okay. but I could be tempted to be a bit adventurous. If I was an antique and you looked at me, what would you think of me? <laughs> I mean, would you, would you buy me, for example? I think I'd say I'd have him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got my eye. <laughs> a bit that. unusual, oh, no. a wee bit quirky. <laughs> and I'd say you're full of colour in <laughs> nice condition. Oh, Charlie, we're like a mutual admiration society. <laughs> <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Charles made a small loss in the sale room last time and is still on the back foot with £217.34. Anita also had a wee hiccup at the last auction, but he's still ahead with a healthy £317.38 to spend this time. Our 1972 Triumph Stag is looking good, and by their own admission, so are our experts. I love that suit there. Is that out in the movies? Do you, do you like my suit, seriously? Charlie, I think you're absolutely lovely today. You think so? Your mammy would be proud of you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Charles and Anita were waved off from Kilbarken and are touring the byways of the Scottish borders in Cumbria before a final auction in North Shields. Today, they're cycling the lakes and skirting the Solway before heading north to auction in Rosewell, near Edinburgh. But the first port of call is Keswick, where Anita's dropped off Charles for his first shop of the day. Now, this Lakeland town is associated with romantic writers and artists. In the 19th century, this was the centre of pencil manufacturing. Hopefully, Charles will be drawing inspiration today from his first shop, Keswick Collectibles. Good morning. Hello. What How are you? A fine day. It is. Got well, it's Keswick. It's always like this. Ah, the sun shines on the righteous, eh? What's the plan then, Charles? At the moment, I am feeling the pressure. Anita is ahead, and I've got to try and catch her. Am I feeling confident? It could happen like that. Suddenly, out of nowhere, can be that object that can be very much a story of rags to riches. I'm hoping it might happen. Dreams do come true. They do. Mark, being in Keswick, of course, what Keswick is renowned for is things like this, isn't it? Keswick School of Art, yeah. Keswick School of Art. Yeah. The Keswick School of Art, I suppose, goes back to, what, the period of the Art Nouveau? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 1890s, uh, just, 1900s. Um, yeah, if you want an expert, you're probably not talking to quite the right chap, but uh, I know quite a bit about it. Um, the school itself was about just a few hundred yards down the street. Well, this was the sort of stuff they made, um, copper being one of the more popular, slightly more popular than brass. It's lovely, but at £225, it's a tad expensive for Charles. Any other shiny things with his name on them? Mark, this little napkin ring here I quite like. Not a problem. I'll just get the may, may I just um, fish it out? And it's Birmingham, 1897. What happened in 1897? I'll test you. Oh, man, you're talking... If I give you a clue, 60 years for Queen and Country. Oh, was it sort of commemorative by any chance? It. Well, yeah, I Queen, mean, Queen Victoria. I should know all these things, really. Are you an Englishman? Yes. Yeah, Queen Victoria celebrated 60 years on the throne. Of course. I was just about to say that. <laughs> The reason I like it is we're going to Edinburgh and I suspect these might be little Scottish Cornelian and yeah. um, different agate stones inset onto silver. It may have been one of six, 
but the quality of this napkin ring is exquisite. It's Hallmark Birmingham with the anchor. It's 1897. It is priced at 75 pounds. Again, it's not going to feel for where I am. What could be the best price on that? Out of interest. Well, we've had a need to him before, so I don't know where my allegiances lie. But you... as, as you're in with me this time, and right. I, I don't want you to have a good chance, you can have it for 35. <laughs> I'm going to have 90% of Scotland against me for saying that. But, uh... <laughs> can I mental note it? Yes, you can. Put it onto your desk. I'll put it on the desk. For food for thoughts. That'd be kind. Thank you very much, Mark. No I'll problem. come back to you. Sterling work, eh? Now, what's the story with our silver darling out and about soaking up the glorious scenery? I love the Lake District. Land of the romantic ports, Beatrix Potter, and wonderful landscape. Sun shining, the sky's blue, the wee car is driving like a dream. You couldn't get much better than this. No, you couldn't. Anita's travelling south to Kendal, and her first stop today is the Antiques Emporium. Ah, oh, hello, hello I'm Anita. Oh, nice to see you. This looks fabulous. Oh, thank you. And you've got a bit of everything here? Oh, we hope so. And a little bit of what you fancy does you good, eh? Zoot alors! How about a verse of the Marseillaise? Come on now, let's get serious. I usually like men with a bit more meat on their bones, but I kind of like this guy. It's fun. Headless, unfortunately, this isn't a real skeleton, of course, and it would possibly have been a teaching aid at medical school. The sale of human skeletons is strictly prohibited these days, thank goodness, but as the science of osteology developed in the 17th century, there grew up a thriving trade. Gruesome. Wouldn't he make an interesting conversation piece at your dinner parties? <laughs> I don't know what sort of dinner party she goes to. He's priced at £125, and I think I would like to take him to the auction, but I've got to get the price down. <laughs> yes. Cue, Chris. I'd like to pay in the region of £50, £60. Now, I know that's a big jump down, big so jump you've down. got to... I, you, you've got I'll to have tell to go and me. Ask the dealer. Right, can Anita secure the skeleton for half price from dealer Denise? I like him. I know that he isn't the real deal, that he hasn't been dug up by uh, Birkin here, but I would like to pay between 50 and 60 pounds. Is that too far down? Uh, it is a bit. I'll tell you what, Anita, you can have it at first. 65. Denise, you are wonderful. You're wonderful. And I'd love to meet you because we've obviously got the same taste in men. <laughs> what? Don't fancy yours much, love. Denise was lovely. £65. She is. And uh, I've got a new boyfriend. <laughs> Looks like she's not done yet, though. Uh, what we have are a pair of little salt dishes. They're in the form of little oak tubs and they're bound by silver plate. It would be lovely if it was silver. But I think they would be a lot more expensive if they were Hallmark silver. What makes them specially sweet are the little spoons in the form of a shovel. They're probably late 19, early 20th century. And we've got a pair so that one can sit at each end of the table. Price ticket, £68. Mm, maybe a wee bit dear, but if I can get a wee bit off, well, they're so unusual that uh, I might be in with a chance. Chris, I uh, thought these were lovely. Noticed them earlier on. My eye was drawn to them. They're quite unusual. They are, they're sweet, aren't they? They're very, very sweet. Yes. Is there anything we can do in the price? I have a little bit of movement on them but about 60. Is 50 possible? I think that's a bit too far. Too far? 55? Mm, I would have liked 60, but 
Go on, as it's you. We do, we we'll do, do 55. We'll do. They're, yeah. they're so sweet, they're irresistible. They are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'll collect my new boyfriend in the way OK, I'll treat him to a meal if it's you. <laughs> that is good. Do with fattening up. Anita's purse is now £120 lighter and with her passenger safely strapped in... OK, darling, buckle up. She's back off up north. Meanwhile, time to see how our other lean machine is getting on in Keswick. Quite like the little ball. That's quite interesting, isn't it? You've got a good eye there, Charles. Do you, do you think so? I think it's a really nice piece, yeah, yeah. The reason I like this is it's well chiselled, and if you look at the depth of detail, we've got this almost design and relief, which is florid, it's organic, we've got these beautiful sprays on this fairly, what you might call, matte textured ground that over the years has become quite dirty. That, that's quite nice to see. I suspect this is probably Indian silver. It could be 1895, it could be as late as 1905. I would sell it to you for £40. Would you really? Mm. Yeah, I like that. I will put him with my napkin ring Excellent. as a maybe. Thank you. No Mark. problem. I'm gonna keep, do you mind if I keep digging? No, no, no. I'm digging for victory, quite literally, in finding my treasure. One thing, one thing I, I quite like, Mark, is this here. I, I picked this out of the box um, because this is probably Art Deco. Yeah. 1920s. Yeah. I'll tell you what. If you're taking those two for 35 and 40, I'll throw you that one in. Very generous. But what is it? You've got a thimble and like that and of course inside you've got the real for your different cottons although that is silver plated ah it's a sewing kit you'll see the engine turned silver casing and the enamel that sadly has dissipated although there's remnants of the of the enamel still on there but just on the outer edge here very indistinct as a silver hallmark. I, I feel now it's time to make some decisions. The best you sold on the bowl was 40. 40 on that one, yeah. The napkin ring, 35. And would you throw that one in as well? Yeah. Are you happy 75 with that? for the three, yeah. So what I might do then for auction is make two lots. I might put the Scottish napkin ring together and thread through my little sewing requisite lot. Yeah. It is silver. So that's two lots at £75. That's business. Smashing. I'll Thank say you going, going. Go on. Sold. That's great. Two silvery lots for auction for a bit of a song. Nice work. In the meanwhile, Anita's driven north to Penrith, a route trodden by Romans 2,000 years ago. The roads might not be so straight these days, but they're a lot less bumpy as she heads to her next antiques emporium. The Brunswick Yard. Hi, I'm Hi there. Anita. Hi, uh, Adam. Welcome. This this is a fascinating antique centre. There's plenty going on here. Uh, every, everything from a few hundred, even thousand pounds, down to fifty p. Something for fifty p would be good. This is quite an interesting little child's chair. It's a nice wee thing. It's a child's potty chair. <laughs> We're potty training. This would date from early part of the 20th century, late part of the 19th century. And look at this here. The poor wee soul was locked into the potty chair until he or she performed. Don't know if I like that, but it's quite interesting. I wonder how many P that would be. <laughs> oh, she's moving on. I spotted this pair of candlesticks. I think they're silver plate could be aluminium. They're in that case and they are very much in the modernist style. They're not to everyone's taste, but I think that they've got a lot of style. They're priced at £30, which is not a lot of money. I'm going to have a look at them. Adam's your man. I thought that they might appeal to the younger set because they have that modernist look. Um, but they could be from maybe the 19... 30s, 40s. They've got that kind of look about them. They've got they? that kind yeah. of look. They've got that kind of look. Can these be bought for £18? Simple answer is no. 27 yeah. would be dead best. I think I'm going to go for them. 
27. Thank you Dear. very much. Thank you. Well, they're not Liberace, but they might shine for you at auction. <laughs> oh, that'll be her off then. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charles has also made his way to Penrith, where he's about to get to grips with the sport people in these parts take great pride in, Cumberland or Westmoreland wrestling. In Victorian times, this form of combat became a hugely popular alternative to bare-knuckle fighting and boxing. At Penrith and Eden Museum, our very own Big Daddy is going to get the lowdown from curator Corrine Lean. What was unique about this form of wrestling? It was always played on grass, okay. and then the opponents would face each other and then yeah. hold each other around the waist okay. like this. Okay. Interlock their hands yes. um, around the back. Yes. And then try and, then and top try and, each other. So I would literally yeah. try and do that and try and yeah. push you over. Yeah. Yes. So you want a nice tight grip because no. that was one of the rules you'd lose if your hand slips and your grip opens. Okay. Um, the other way you could lose during the match is if any of your body parts other than your feet touch the ground. The real big daddy of this wrestling was local man William Jameson, a Penrith joiner by trade who reigned supreme from the 1850s to the 1870s when betting on big prize bouts attracted huge crowds. Yeah, he was very tall. He weighed about 17 stone, so um, very heavy guy. Um, a newspaper article commented on his yeah. size a lot, saying he looked like a polar bear standing up on his hind legs. He won loads of trophies, loads of belts, so traditionally a belt would be awarded for winning the wrestling match, and it was custom that people would wear it to church on Sundays um, wow. to show they'd won. Jameson won this fine belt in 1860. Gosh, that's amazing. It is quite heavy as well. And it's in this beautiful condition, isn't it? Patinated polished and just cherished over the years. I, I feel quite inspired by Jameson. I feel, you know, quite beefed up now. Well, that's a good thing, because we actually booked you in for a wrestling match later on in Heskett, so... I'd love to watch one. Oh, no, you're actually competing, so I hope you've been listening. Get ready to place your bets. They're waiting for Charles at Heskett Newmarket Agricultural Show, where he's going to take on local wrestling hero John Harrington. Is it John? Yes. Now, John, I understand you're eight times wrestling world champion. Yes, that's right. And you're a local lad, yep. born and bred. Yep. How should I feel? Nervous. Scared. <laughs> very, very scared. And I've got this for you. To What's put this? On. This is the costume to put on. A pair of stockings, a pair of... What are they? Shorts. They're pants, aren't they? Yep. We'll wear those that, as well. That's what you call a centrepiece. <laughs> <laughs> this is the centrepiece. OK, be careful. And then I've obviously got here, what's that, a, a vest? Some, some long and johns and a vest. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah, OK. I'm all set. I can't wait to see Charles in that get-up. And look, Anita's arrived <laughs> to cheer him on. Are you angry? Yeah, I want to see you, I want to see you yeah. angry. OK, I'm angry, Anita. Are you angry? Yeah, I'm angry. Right, yeah. Come on, yeah, I'm angry. angry. OK, this is it. We got him in the ring to very well match wrestlers. Oh, no, we're well, not at all. <laughs> on the one hand, our local expert, John Harrington, multi-champion <laughs> from the world <laughs> And against him, come on! An aspiring wrestler, <laughs> Charles Hanson. Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Road trip. Yeah. Oh, Charlie! 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 Oh, oh. right. Yeah. He knows how to take Charlie, all. You're doing wonderful. Right okay, Charlie. Oh my! Come on, Charles. Had a boy. <laughs> Oh, no! I felt that. <laughs> oh, well done, Charles. Oh. He's looking so good that he pulled him back. He's a good man. I can't beat a world champion. But it was a good try. You are a good sport. You are my hero. Oh, and he's don't say that. I'm now weak at the knees in more ways than one. <laughs> hey, Come time on. to retire. Dignity intact. Mighty night. <laughs> The sun is up and our stag is off and running. Our experts are rested and reflecting on the trip so far. Have you bought any more broken plates? 
Anita, you know my heart grows fond for the battered and bruised because <laughs> we are survivors in this we car. We are, Charlie. Together. We are. <laughs> How was your day? Did you, oh, I did had you a, get lucky? I had a great time. I got a bit lonely yesterday, Charlie, without, without you in the oh, car. Thanks, Anita. So I bought a little travelling companion. Did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yesterday, Anita met the man of her dreams. All night knows. I usually like men with a bit more meat on their bones. And picked up two candlesticks and two salt dishes, leaving her with £170.38 still in her purse. While Charles rummaged around in Keswick and turned up a haul of silver, a napkin ring, a bowl and a sewing case. Going, going. going. Gone. Sold! Which means he has a budget today of £142.34. I think what we've got, Anita, with you and I, with this motor, is reliability. And beauty and glamour. And beauty and glamour. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Is there no end to this mutual admiration? Next stop is Cockermouth, birthplace of William Wordsworth and of Fletcher Christian, who led the mutiny on the bounty. Hopefully no mutineering, but plenty of bounty oh. at Colin Graham Antiques. Good luck, Charlie. <laughs> you too. Which way are you going? I'll keep my eye on you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep my eye on you as well. You go that way. OK. I love jewellery cabinets like this. It's all a jumble. And you always think that you can find something which is absolutely perfect to buy. We're going to Edinburgh, so I have to be mindful of that. And I found this lovely Scottish pebble brooch. Now, these brooches would have been made in Edinburgh in the 1800s. Queen Victoria loved Scotland, and she made this type of jewellery very, very popular. Now, these stones here are made from pebbles which have been found on the beaches and the burns of Scotland. But it's got 65 on it. Although I like it a lot. I don't know if I'll like it for 65 pounds. Keep looking then. Now, what's Charles up to? Look out. <sighs> Charles, should you really be standing on that chair? It's a lovely tea, Caddy. It's what you call egg and dart moulding. And egg and dart moulding was wonderful neoclassical ornamentation which then went into the Regency period as well and this tea caddy in its sorry sarcophagus form on the bun feet would date to around 1820 and by 1820 we first saw Indian tea coming into the UK so tea caddies became bigger as drinking tea became more of a middle-class commodity I like it but it's 85 pounds it's too much money Meanwhile, time waits for no man or woman. I love this clock. It's when nice. I saw it, I fell in love with it. But I know I'm a Glasgow girl. Yeah. I'm a Glasgow girl. This was made by a Glasgow girl. It's a stunning clock, Anita. Hear that chime. No, no it's silence. Sorry. It's that one, the other oh, one chiming. But that facade, Anita, I mean, it, it looks at you and I think, what two amazing looking Scottish. Faces together. Shut up! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but don't you agree? Colin, ignore Charlie. When I walked into the shop, this was the first thing that I saw. This clock is typical of the style of our nouveau design, which flourished in Glasgow at the turn of the 20th century and which often incorporated Celtic motifs. These artworks are highly prized and likely to do well at auction according to Anita. I'm frightened to ask how much it costs. I've got 285 on it. I would give you all the money that I have to spend. £170 and 38 pence. And if you left me 38 pence, I would buy that clock. And that's me blown my whole budget, and I've never done that before. But it'd be a lovely thing for me to buy. I'd sell it to her, quick. It's singing at me. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so pleased. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. Oh, oh, thank you very much. There you go. Thank you very wow. much. Oh, that's lovely. I hope you do well with it. Well, it sure had your name on it, Anita. Lovely, thank, thank you very much. 
It Excellent. was terrific. But I've still got this 38 pence, and I couldn't find anything for 38 pence. Well, I'll tell you what, put your money in there. Right. That's it. 38 pence. Oh, Don't say I didn't give you out. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's great. Well, that was generous, Colin. It's a bucket-shaped match striker and ashtray dating from around 1910. So, Anita now has five lots for auction. Success then for Anita, but what about our man who seems to have got behind Colin's counter? I've just picked up, literally, in the corner, in between these two books, quite a nice little silver, what appears to be a scent bottle, hallmarked, late Victorian, out of interest. There's, there's no price on it. How much is that? 25 quid. How much? 25. Are you very best? Give us a 20. I found a little late Victorian silver scent bottle. We're all happy. Put it there. Good man. Put it there. Fancy a vessel? I'm not kissing you. <laughs> and that concludes our very amicable business here. Be good. Safe travelling. Bye. <laughs> See you. Bye. See you, bud. Today, the borders are a place of tranquillity, a landscape of rolling hills and farmland dotted with cattle, sheep and antique shops. But these lands were once lawless and deadly. Anita's in Carlisle, a city buffeted by history because of its position on the border, its mighty castle besieged more than any other in Britain. Into this chaos rode the border reavers in a reign of terror lasting three centuries. David Gobsill at Tully House Museum describes life here in the 13th to 16th centuries. For the rich, obviously, it would have been quite quite comfortable <laughs> um, and unfortunately for the poor it was a very difficult time it was a war zone the whole area was just trodden down by passing armies um, and of course if England invaded Scotland or Scotland invaded England the first areas that would be hit would be the borders the Reavers came from both sides of the border families with names like Armstrong Johnson Hetherington and Graham Taking advantage of political chaos, they donned their steel bonnets and plundered and feuded to the death with their neighbours. They also would hold protection rackets against people or places, and the reavers are actually where we get the term blackmail from. So in those days, the green mail was the rent you would pay to your landowner, and the blackmail would be paid to the people who you were trying to protect yourself from. The rugged terrain of this war zone provided a training ground for these expert cattle rustling bandits. So they were excellent horsemen, they were incredibly skilled, and they were actually called the finest light cavalry in all of Europe for their time, which is incredible. Um, they would obviously have a rapier, a lance would be quite popular in those days, um, and they would use this on a very small horse to pick their way across the fells, and appear in the cover of darkness, murder, pillage, and disappear back into the darkness. Borderers lived year in, year out with the threat of being reaved, and that's where our word bereaved comes from. Those who had most to lose were the best able to defend themselves. If you've had a bit of wealth, you might have what's called a basil house. That would be a fortified house, the walls would be quite thick and they would be up to seven metres tall. You'd have a large basement and underneath to hide your cattle. That sounds almost like a castle. It does, um, but it doesn't even hold a torch up to the peel towers of the day. So a peel tower is a large fortified tower. They'd have a barmakin, which is an outside wall that would protect a small area like a courtyard. And then there would be the tower, which would be up to 19 metres tall, walls about three metres thick that would really protect you against any reaving attacks. It sounds like dreadful times. Was there nothing put in place to stop this lawlessness? The monarchs of both England and Scotland tried to stop it using wardens of the marches. And these wardens were a bit like the police of the time. Unfortunately, a lot of these wardens were locals. So a lot of them either had ties to the reaving families or were in fact reavers themselves. So it didn't really help much because you were giving a lot more power to a border reaving family and they could use that to their own gain. In 1603, when James VI of Scotland inherited the throne of England, this union of the crowns brought some peace to Anglo-Scottish relations. 
Reavers were outlawed and banished, leaving behind stories sung in border ballads and the towers they attacked and defended in those violent times. Charles is wending his way now to Maryport on the Solway Firth, where a fort once guarded the Roman sea defences west of Hadrian's Wall. It's Charles's last shop. So what's he after? I'm looking for that next big thing, and in antiquing terms, it's that rare Ming vase or important undiscovered Fabergé. It's out there. I just need some luck. Fabergé and Ming, eh? <laughs> that might require more of a miracle than just luck, but maybe miracles of the order of the day at Mary Port Antiques. Good day. How are you? Is it your shop? Yes. Nice your name you. is? Ben. Ben, what a lovely shop. <laughs> now for that Ming vase, Charles. Oh! Butterfingers. Come on, man. Focus. What's this? Is that just... That's just a... Um, a pot. It's peculiar. Yeah, we're trying to. Uh, we're trying to identify. Why you, how much could it be? How much could it be? Hundred pounds. Okay. We've got this incised, what we might call sgraffito decoration, which in style is quite difficult to date. Could be Oriental. Could be African. The lid, almost one when one picks it up, you think, is it lead? It looks like lead, but it's not. Again, it's just a really coarse earthenware body. This pot could date from as far back as the 16th century, and its geometric pattern suggests it's probably of South American origin. Best price would be 100. I think the best price would be 100 on that, yeah. And that's what you call the death, isn't it? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah, that's OK. Yeah. Well, it might kill me. Um, I'll take it. OK, fantastic. Mm. Very decisive. Anything else? Quite like. Just... This little small dog. It's just sitting, isn't it, Ben, lurking. Your little guard dog. It's a very little guard dog. <laughs> On your top deck. It's quite a sweet, what we call a toy. Staffordshire porcelain toy. Uh, probably 19th century. How much is that? I think I could probably do that for uh, 15 pound. 15. If you found anything else, I could maybe do a little bit. There's one thing I've seen when I walked into the front. If I put him down there, sure. if I go and get it, maybe we can do a deal. Yeah, of course. What is it? Fabergé egg? <laughs> it's not quite lights out yet, but of course, back in the Victorian times, you had a chamber stick. Y yes. I just quite like this because it's only five pounds. Age-wise, we're talking 1860. And what's lovely, it's all hand-painted. Yeah. All hand-painted with these wonderful, uh, busy, vibrant sprays of flowers, what we call a dentil gilt rim. Yes, it's got a crack. It's a shame. Just on the sconce, there's a small crack. I'm an envoy. I like buying <laughs> objects because, <laughs> to me, it's a survivor. So, Ben, if I bought the chamber stick in porcelain Staffordshire and I bought the King Charles Spaniel with it as well. What could be the best price? I'll do it for 12 and 5. Are you sure? I'll do it for 12. Is there money in it for you, though, at that? Yes. That's 5 for the chamber stick and 12 for the dog. And with the pot, Charles is handing over £117. And that's him done. Take care. Until next time. And you. Cheers. Good bye bye. Bye. Bye bye, Mary Port. Time to collect our other priceless prize, Anita, and hit the trail. What's the direction of travel? Let's get to the end of this road and see if we can see a signpost that says to the north. Exactly, Anita. <laughs> it's that simple. The north, here we come. Back over the border soon enough, after some shut-eye, eh? Auction day has dawned and the stage is set at Rosewell, a former mining village south of Edinburgh, where our irrepressible pair are leading us a merry Scottish country dance. Heel toe, heel toe, gallop, gallop, gallop. gallop, gallop. And we're here, voila. Charlie. As if by magic, Anita and Charles took the B roads from Keswick on a scenic tour of the lakes before crossing the Scottish border and heading for Rosewell. Our sale room today is Thompson Roddick, a family firm which has been gavel-bashing hereabouts since 1880. 
Anita blew her entire budget of £317.38 on five lots. Charles was also very nearly cleaned out, spending £212 on his five lots. So, what do they think? Honestly. This is an old cracked pot, and Charlie loves his old cracked pots, but this pot could be something very special. Over 300 years old, probably South American, there will be buyers out there who are anxious to get a hold of that. Crack pot indeed, eh? This clock looked amazing in the shop, and Anita, you hit the jackpot. It just captures everything you want, from the organic, sinuous lines of the Glaswegian school of handicraft to the numerals. I cannot believe it was under £200. Time will tell them. Now, what does auctioneer Savelle Thompson think about what Charles and Anita have bought? Lots of interest in the skeleton. Just a shame it's headless, but I think it'll do really well here. The napkin ring and the silver sewing case. These are always popular and particularly will do well in Edinburgh as there's lots of collectors for pieces set with Scottish hardstone. Please be seated. I'm looking forward to this, Charlie. It's a really busy feeling of vibrancy. First up and standing to attention is Anita's skeleton. Don't lose your head here. Ooh, somebody did. Thirty-five pounds, thirty-five, thirty-five, forty-five, fifty-five, Slow down. fifty-five. Anyone else? Sixty-five, seventy-five, eighty. Yeah. I don't believe eighty pounds. It. I don't standing believe at eighty. It. Five. Ninety. Five. One hundred pounds. Standing at the back at one hundred. Anyone else going on at one hundred pounds? A meaty thirty-five pound profit on the bones. Doesn't seem a lot that to me. I can't believe that. Has it put me ahead? <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Charles's Indian silver bowl. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Thirty. Going on the internet. Thirty-five. Come on, internet. Thirty-five. <laughs> 40, 40 pounds, 45, on commission at 45. You're all out on the internet at 45 pounds. A profit of five pounds sterling to you, sir. It wasn't bad, Charlie. Anita, I'm a happy man. Anita's oak and silver-plated salt dishes now. Can they serve up a profit? And start straight in at 20 bid, 20 bid. Everywhere, 25, 30, make a wave. 5, 40, make a wave. 5, 50. Five, fifty-five, sixty, sixty pounds, sixty-five. Gentlemen seated at sixty-five, seventy online. Yes, seventy, seventy, <laughs> seventy online. Would you like another, sir? Don't be put off. Seventy-five in the room at seventy-five <laughs> at seventy-five pounds. Another twenty pounds profit in Anita's pocket. It's what they call a good touch. A good touch. Touch me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so will Lady Luck help Charles with his next lot, the Scottish hardstone inset napkin ring and the silver-plated and enamel sewing case? 45, 55, go on, go on. 65, 65, 70, 75, 80, keep 5... Going, keep going, lads, keep going, lads. 95 at 95 pounds. 60 pounds worth of good fortune there. Nice one, Charles. That's good, isn't it? Brilliant, Charlie. Oh, Brilliant. I'm it's sweaty now. I'm excited. <laughs> Time now for Anita's white metal modernist candlesticks. 20. I've got 20 bit. 20. 25. 25. 30. 5. 40. Here we go. 5. We're rolling 50. home. They're angry. 5. 55. At 55 pounds. Anita's done it again. She's doubled her money. What a girl. When you got it, Anita, you've got it, girl. Loving your work. Well, you're not doing too badly yourself, Charles. Next up, it's his silver scent bottle. 20, 5, 30, 5, 40, 5, 45, 50 online. 55. Anyone else going on at 55 pounds? Another profit there. Our duo are definitely on a roll today. Brilliant, Charlie, brilliant. Breathe it in, Anita. Breathe it in. Breathe the sweet cell of success. Exactly, Anita. Exactly. Easy for you to say. <laughs> now, one of the cheapest items ever bought on the Antiques Road Trip, the brass bucket Anita bought for 38 pence. <laughs> £10, 15, 
20, 20. In the centre at 20. Anyone else going on for the match striker at 20? At 20 pounds. 20 pounds. That's a profit of 5,263%. Oh, yes, I calculated that in my head. Liar. If you could buy a few of those for 38p and then toss them in for a £20 note, incredible business, and you demand it. I know. Can the next lot, the Staffordshire Porcelain Candlestick and King Charles Spaniel, top that? £10. I've got 10 bid. 15. Uh, love. 15. 20. 25. 25. You're bidding. It's yes. 30. Thank you very much. 30. Thank you. 30 pounds. Thank you. On the right at Thank 30. You. Thank Anyone you. else going on at 30 pounds? Nice work, China. That's great. Very happy. Now. Will time be kind to our Glasgow gal and her brass-faced clock? 100 for the nice clock at 100, oh, 110, it, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 160 170, 180, 190, 200, 210. I'd have another, sir. 220, 230, 240, 250. Anyone else going on at £250? £80 profit for Anita. There's no stopping her today. Well, that was exciting, though, wasn't Anita, it? Anita, you're flying. Oh, you are flying oh, high. Yeah. Charles's last lot now. The earthenware jar and cover. Bold and mysterious. Will it be auction gold? Uh, quite a lot of interest in this, and I can start straight in at 30 bid, 30 bid, 30 bid, 30 bid. It's going to run or fall. 30, 5, 40, 5, 50, 5, 60, 5, 65. Anyone else going on at 65? 70, 5, 80, 5, 90, 5. 95. Selling on commission at 95. At 95 pounds. So close. But all their other items today have turned a profit. We had great results. Wonderful. We had great Moments. fun. Memories. We're both exhausted with the excitement. It. Now it's time to have a nice cup of tea. On you go. Give me a push. <laughs> That's a lot. You deserve a refreshment, you two. Charles started with £217.34 in his piggy and his success in the sale room today increased his tally after auction costs by £50.40p to £267.74. So well done, Carlos. Anita began with £317.38 and she soared away in Rosewell with a profit after auction costs of £92.62. So, with a new total of £410, she is leading the dance again. That was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We both made money. Exactly. Now, listen, give me a hard and fling. Jig for joy. Jig for joy. Jig for joy. Catch her if you can, Charles. Yeah.